Now, the summer of love. Remember it like it was just yesterday, despite the fact that it was three and a half years ago. Isn't that crazy? Time flies. The summer of love riots across this country where buildings were burned down. Well, take a look at this story. Fulton County judge gives $500 fine, no jail time for rioters who burned down Atlanta Wendy's during Black Lives Matter riots. This, my friends, is what is known as abject evil. Okay, abject meaning there is nothing, nothing more evil than quite literally what you're seeing right now. Two dangerous, psychotic extremists with murderous intent, and they don't get in trouble for burning down buildings. The outrage right now is over the multi-tiered justice system that we live in. You've got the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene, as well as many others, pointing out that January Sixers, some of whom were not part of any riot, are facing years over January 6th. But these people, nothing. Let's talk about Enrique Tarrio, who was not in D.C. on January 6th, who just got 20 years in prison for it. Let's talk about the person who knocked over a barricade, Joe Biggs, 20 years. And I'm rounding up because not 20 for everybody. Some got more, some got a little less. I met someone, I met a woman, and she said that she had gone to the Capitol about an hour after everything happened. She was with her husband and they walked up. There's no signs, there's no fences, there's no barricades. They walk up the sidewalk. They see people walking around, walk inside the building for a couple of minutes, look around, shrug, and then leave. And now they're going to jail for 18 months a year and a half. You got to understand, when it comes to January 6th, they want to show you this image of the riot. And the riot was bad. And the people fighting cops should not have. Now, there are people saying, oh, but the police fired into the crowd, triggering the violence. Okay, well, that cop should be held accountable. But the fact that people charged into the building and smashed windows and climbed their way in. Yeah, that doesn't, I don't care if a cop fired you know, rubber bolts around him. A guy got uh, rubber bolts at people. A guy got in his face. They shouldn't have. Right. But doesn't excuse people smashing windows and storming into the building. OK, now we'll set that all aside and mention about an hour after all of that happened. There are numerous stories of people who showed up. Trump finished speaking. They start walking over. Nobody has any idea what's going on. They're not watching the news. They're walking around D.C. And they walk up to the other side of the Capitol building. Police have fanned people in and opened the doors. There's no broken glass. They're taking selfies with people. And so they walk up like, oh, what's going on? And now they're being hunted down and charged for being part of some insurrection. Evil. Evil reigns. I think we're winning, though. They would not need to be so desperate and panicked if we were losing. Take a look at this in the post millennial. Two of the three suspects accused of setting fire to a Wendy's in Atlanta during a BLM riot have accepted plea deals. Chisholm Kingston and Natalie White were both charged with conspiracy to commit arson in the first degree and two counts of first degree arson. The pair pleaded guilty to their crimes. Kingston and White have both been sentenced to five years probation and ordered to pay a $500 fine and community service. No jail time, though. Hmm. That's really amazing. John Wesley Wade, 35, was indicted on the same charges. All three initially pleaded not guilty and waived their arraignments. The charges stem from a violent riot, this we understand. As a result, they torched the Wendy's in protest of Brooks's death. An autonomous zone was created. Oh, boy. John Wesley Wade, the third suspect that did not take a plea deal, is a prominent BLM activist in Atlanta and led several protests in the summer of 2020. In October 2020, he was arrested on federal charges over a string of violent demonstrations and was sentenced to five years in federal prison. Amazing. He's among a group of rioters that torched Atlanta police vehicles and set fires to the U.S. Postal Service property during the lead up to the 2020 election. The group left notes that read stand by in attempt to frame the Proud Boys for their crimes. The phrase was a reference to Donald Trump. He said, stand back and stand by. He shouldn't have said that. That was stupid. Wade was caught by police after he was ordered to wear a GPS ankle monitoring vest to damage attacks when he was released on bond for burning down the Wendy's location. OK, James Lindsay has a thread helping you explain exactly what we are experiencing. 
James Lindsay says, Almost everything the left does only makes sense when you understand that there are broadly two classes of people and wholly different rules. There's three classes, sort of. But let's read this and then I'll elaborate. The people and the enemies of the people who are not considered valid people. This logic underlies all of their thinking. The people are those who support leftist theory and practice or who might still be trained to do so. The enemies of the people are those who resist or reject leftism, have something leftists don't want them to have, break from leftism or represent any opposing faction. Nothing the people do so long as it's consistent with advancing leftism is wrong. In fact, it's necessary and right. Violence, hate and malice are resistance. They are taught these are necessary moral goods and trained to believe it. Actions don't matter. Context does. Nothing the enemies of the people do can be right, even if it is. It's for the wrong reasons so wrong. Everything they do is bad and must be punished. The only thing that can, uh, the only thing they can do is to confess over and over and start their journey to becoming a leftist. The people, in quotes, are taught to hate the enemies of the people and to blame them for all failures of leftism. Leftism, leftism is never wrong. It would always work, but for the enemies of the people. They must be hated for everything then and blamed for hating the people. Today in Western Marxism, the enemy of the people is Western civilization and its hegemony, including its individual liberties and market economies. Everyone who supports these is an enemy of the people. Everyone who hates it is uh, who hates it is the people. Their violence is resistance. Like when Hamas raped those women and men, they call that resistance. Israel is coded as Western, a British American project to bring Western hegemony to the Middle East. Hegemony. Ireland is Western. It is therefore colonizing the millions of people who immigrated there in the last few years. America is Western. It must be dismantled. It isn't more complicated than this. It, well, it is. It is. But James is 99 percent right. Nor is it particularly inconsistent. Almost everything in leftism that doesn't make sense makes sense once you understand the simple split defines all of its thinking. Diversity means outside the enemies of the people or diverse compared to the background of Western hegemony. Inclusion means including what's outside of Western hegemony. That means people who support leftism and hate the enemies of the people. For all means for all the people. This means taking away from the enemies of the people and redistributing it among the people for equity. Things that are for all are therefore just for some. And the source is what the enemies of the people have. Until you comprehend that leftist logic is truly a two-tiered hate-driven system that always excuses itself and allows any evil on its enemies, you can't really understand them. Once you do, it's transparent and immediately apparent in almost everything they do. No mystery. Well, hold on there a minute. I mean, they're getting probation. This guy's going to federal prison for separate charges. Certainly, it's not absolute what James Lindsay is saying, but it is overwhelmingly true. And uh, well, I can make it simple for you. It's it's well, a little bit more complicated than what James said, actually. It's not that uh, it's just this two tier, the people and the enemy of the people. There are uh, 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 the there's the resistance. And that is what James Lindsay refers to as the people. There's then the people and then the enemy of the people. The people are random individuals who don't know and don't do anything, have no idea what's going on. The people are not provided any services or means or resources. The resistance is. So we've talked about this in terms of the three tiered justice system. It's not two tiered. A lot of people have said it's two tiered because if you're on the left, you get away with it. If they're right, you go to prison. Yes. But then there's the middle that is ignored entirely. You take a look at New York and San Francisco. Let's talk about ignored entirely. These are the people. Or maybe James is right when he says the people is the resistance and everyone else is just the enemy. But I do think that if you frame it that way, you have to understand that there's a, there's a third class, there's a middle class. People in San Francisco who have no idea what's going on, don't pay attention and don't vote, who are living in squalor, who are attacked and beaten. Let's say you live in New York and you own a bodega and a guy breaks in and mercilessly beats you and steals your stuff. When you call the police, they don't do anything. That's it. And they'll come by and say, what do you want us to do about it? They don't do anything. They're not going to arrest the bad guy and they're not going to help protect you. Luke Rudkowski has got a famous uh, uh, interview. He's got a, uh, uh, an interview with a famous guy. Guy was on a train. A, a, a lunatic started stabbing people. Random guy with cops around fights the guy off and gets stabbed several times. Cops did nothing. Say, we don't have to do anything. We're not intervening. Cops will not protect you. All right, now let's slow down. Let's say you were on the train and a guy stabbing someone and you're a Trump supporter wearing a MAGA hat. They would arrest you for aggravated assault. They'd lock you up. Like we saw with, uh, you had um, 
Daniel Penny and Perry. In New York, I believe it was Penny. He subdues a man who's threatening to kill people. The man dies. They say, it's time for you to go to jail now. And that's just a regular guy. Ah, but he was a veteran. You see, in this instance, somebody died. So as a member of the people, just I mean, the middle, the middle ground, you are going to be used as as, as, as a tool. We don't want protests. We don't care about you. Too bad. Have a nice day. What you do doesn't matter. Now, if the guy was wearing a Trump hat, oh boy. This we can take a look at with Ahmed Arbery. These guys are not super conservative, but in this case, you can see how extreme things get. Derek Chauvin was a cop. Look at how extreme things get. If they were leftists and they burned down a building or tried to kill somebody, it is a tendency. It is not absolute. It is a tendency. My point is this. It's a little more complicated than James Lindsay says. These individuals are facing probation. They are getting fined and community service because the machine needs to have some semblance of rationality within it. If these people were cheered for and let go, they would lose their power instantly as the middle of the of the road people lose all faith and immediately flock to the enemies of the people. There is a large body of individuals who are not politically active. Many of them lean in a certain direction and kind of know what's going on, but are too scared to speak up. The game right now is, can we convince one side to join us as the safe side? Well, what the left does is they say, oppose us and we'll crush you. Work for us and we'll protect you. So no one will dare speak out against them. We had uh, the Defiant on, uh, Dickie Barrett. He's a great dude. He's the lead singer of the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones and now the lead singer of the Defiant. And he said he doesn't want to, you know, get back at people. He just wants to move on. And I said, the problem is you have created two systems. One, in, uh, you've created, a, well, it's one system. You've created a system in which the average person says, if I defy the left in any way, they will destroy me. If I defy the right in any way, they'll forgive me. So who are they more afraid to defy? If they side with the left and they're wrong, they know you'll forgive them. So they say, well, I got no risk. There's literally no risk at all. We need to create that risk and say, Jimmy Kimmel, you're a bad person and call him out. Jimmy Kimmel said that he wants hospitals not to treat the unvaccinated. All right, to be specific, he said the, the people who want ivermectin, they shouldn't get any treatment at the hospitals. Now, there's a couple ways to interpret. He said people were unvaccinated and the headline said and preferred ivermectin. But he's essentially saying that his friends should die. They should die. And he laughed about it. You know why? What's the downside? He knows that all these people will forgive him if he asks. And he knows he'll lose tons of money and get canceled if he if he sides against the machine. So there must be consequences. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.